I wanted to talk about uh, how technology has changed storytelling over the years. We've gone from the printing press to motion pictures, uh, radio, television, computers, now uh, something called chat GPT. How do you see storytelling evolving with uh, artificial intelligence technology? I don't, I mean, the simple answer is I don't know, um, but it will evolve the same way um, storytelling evolved when books came in. Uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, I, one, one of the stories I tell is years ago, I went to the 800th anniversary of Charles University in Prague. Um, it, it was founded way back. Uh, and within, within a, certainly 50, 75 years, it had 25,000 students who would go to Prague to sit with the, the teachers and listen to them. Uh, about two centuries later, the numbers dropped from 25,000 to 5,000. Why did they drop? Because of books. Um, and I think that kind of change is coming to us in all sorts of, in fact, quite wonderful ways um, that we're just getting used to. The same way people took them a while to get used to books and to used to, used to surrendering themselves to a story in a book the way they would surrender themselves to a storyteller. So I think we're on we're we're on an exciting path, um, and I certainly don't know how that's going to play out. But I think at the heart of it will be what stories can do and what they do, and I think they're doing that for many of us with the new technology. Uh, witness you and I talking right now. Uh, storytelling uh, above all is resilient then. It certainly is. Yeah, no, it's 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 resilient, and it and we we kind of and we grow up with it, and it grows up with us. I mean, because most of us, if we're blessed, lucky, um, begin our our conscious lives with stories and songs. One of the terrible things about the residential school story, one of the many terrible things, one of the in many ways, one of the most terrible was the way it deprived young indigenous people of their language and of their stories and of their ways of being in the world and understanding in the world and understanding its contradictions and complications um, and uh, that was a terrible indeed deadly thing to do and and it's it's being recovered now and it's recovering in a way um, that's wonderful because those, those the stories of Indigenous people told by Indigenous people in their languages are now emerging for those communities and and in in due course for all of us. What do you hope people get out of the book? Well, I hope they I, I tried to write it in a way that would be entertaining, so I hope they get out they get out of it some sense of. Um, of, of the fun of stories, of the fascination of stories, and some sense of um, of the power of stories, but not the overpower of stories. Um, that they are at the heart of storytelling, the listeners and the readers, uh, and the people who who watch, because um, watching is often a very important part of storytelling. And indeed, much storytelling uh, was in images still is in dance in music in various other forms um, but i hope they I, mean, I hope they get a sense of the power of, of of belief that sense in which we we uh, need to believe to take the lines that rod stewart <laughs> brought brought home to us from tim tim harden song um and the ways in which we also need the promise of a balance between belief and truth um, and ways of, of um, negotiating. Storytelling for, for me is, is a kind of GPS in, in a life that doesn't have a GPS. And I hope that comes through for readers. But, and it's written for a wide range of readers, young and old, here and there. The name of the book is Storylines, How Words Shape Our World. It's available from Harbor Publishing. My thanks to author Ted Chamberlain.
Thank you very much, John. Thanks.